Hello there, and welcome to another 3D printed project. Today we'll be working on this Mastercraft case. For myself and a lot of other optometrists in Canada, we have been given this case or bought this case because it conveniently holds all of our gear. Just how much gear this thing actually holds? Well, let me show you. Still not convinced? Well, let me bring out all of these tools individually so you can see how much things we are dealing with. And here you go, this is the bare bones of everything that that container holds for me. Okay, I lied. This is everything that goes into my traveling kit every single day when I go to work. And this is how much equipment fits into that bag. When you buy this Mastercraft case, it comes with this on the inside and also a whole bunch of foam which I've taken out. That was how I organized it usually. Although this was okay, it was not entirely efficient, which is why the logical steps of having a 3D printer and an occupation where I need to organize things is to eventually at some point make this perfectly fit it into there. So that is essentially what we're doing today. We're gonna make this all completely fit in here, but perfectly at every single spot. So this is number one, the Heine BIO lens cases, all the prism stuff. So next on the list, and then a various amount of things that could fit into a pin holder. Retinoscope set, ruler for measuring working distance, puffer for making sure there's not too much dust on the ferropter and etc. And we have the stereo test, flippers. Oh, and this was actually for the red stuff as well. Here's the ophthalmoscope and also an eye care. Air care probes are right here. Here is a slit lamp cell phone adapter for taking really good pictures in front. Here are some more miscellaneous things as well as the Tomji Bible. Anyhow, here are some miscellaneous things. Here's an extra HDVI ruler. Here's just some sticky notes I like to have around so I can jot notes for myself. Some extra batteries for a pin light. I always try to keep some bandage contact lenses in the form of uh, Air Optics Night and Day. Um, yes, I do check on the expiry dates of these and I do replace them every now and then. So miscellaneous things we'll leave here. So before I switched into the Mastercraft case, I was actually using the original case for the Heine BIO. This was the case that came when you bought this thing. This entire bag is slightly too big waste of space to hold one BIO and a charger. This is why a lot of optometrists have elected to do this. So aside from just this case being a waste of space, this is the Heine Red Holder. The Heine Red Holder case contained mainly this, 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 and this, plus that. And that was pretty much it. You can kind of tell that this isn't a lot of room and this is a huge chunk of space. So another one of the reasons why that Mastercraft case is better than the original things it came from. And like I said, it's great already because you went from these two cases to that plus a lot of other space for more things. But now that I have a 3D printer, we can probably go even further. So without further ado, we are going to get into the process of mapping things out. This part was pretty simple because there's only a couple of considerations I needed to take account of. The main consideration was the BIO. Out of all the things I owned, the BIO had the highest altitude due to the knob there. Aside from location, I also had to think about how this would eventually print. The holders for the BIO would itself have to be printed on separate parts, mainly because it did not fit on the print bed. This was disappointing because if I could get the entire BIO onto one print, then it would make the holder for the BIO much more sturdy. Although unfortunate, we still have to move on. The next idea was to put the charger for the BIO right in the center of the actual BIO. This was a configuration that worked even with the foam and I definitely wanted to keep it because this was a really good place to leave these two things. Anyhow, we have this part solidly right in here now. Uh, next up is I do want to fill in some of these gaps with as many other things as I could. Don't you worry, I won't be actually using the dividers in the final build. I'm just putting it here so I can get a good idea on how to slice this case. You might have noticed I also rearranged the BIO a little bit more. The reason is pretty simple. If the front binoculars of the BIO are lying flat with the body, the entire BIO sits much lower in terms of altitude. Having the BIO in that spot meant I can now focus on the other things inside my bag. As you'll come to see, I chose to organize it so that the heavier things, such as the lithium-ion batteries of the RET holder, would be on the bottom of the case. Having placed the RET handles on that part of the case, I decided to fill in the nearby region with the other RET things, such as the heads. And finally, the gaps are filled with the skull depressor and the sharpies, just because the area fit that very well. After this, I hit a bit of a roadblock because I had no idea where to put the eye care. 
The mentioning at this point is kind of difficult just because it's really difficult to gauge how much space you actually have. As a general thumb, I like to think that 3D printing does open up quite a lot of spaces to be used that were previously inaccessible. And with this in mind, I decided to try to fit things as tightly as possible under the assumption that the final print will have a lot more open space than I initially anticipated. And with that said, this was the first draft completed. Okay, now that we have a game plan, what I need to do is I need to figure out how to best print for this. Um, here is the 3D printer bed. I think if I did it this way, yeah, I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna make one, two, three, four, four big quadrants of things. Let's see if I can get to that and just get a little bit of work on this done. The next step is pretty self-explanatory. We are just dimensioning everything and we are leaning towards the tighter side for things, mainly because we do have foam on the corners so you can kind of push in them a little bit, even if it's a bit off. And now we get to the part of the video where it will take you a couple of seconds to get through, but it would take me hours and hours and hours just to plan out everything. During this time, we will also redo quite a lot of dimensioning, just because dimensioning also changes when you change orientations of certain things. If you really pay attention to the background, you'll see that it goes from bright daytime to nighttime as I kept doing this again and again and again and again. I wish I could tell you that I finished the entire thing in one sitting, but the first day all I really got to do was dimensioning all the things I wanted to include in there. It would take many, many more hours before I actually got to a stage where I could actually print this and prototype it. However, with the power of editing, I am going to skip through all of this and just get to the first prototype. The only silver lining in this entire process was that I had dimensioned some of the retinal scope heads already with a different project previously, so I was able to pull the parameters for that for some of the Dimensioning for the retinoscope side. This entire process ended up taking way longer than I thought it would and would require me to review and redo quite a few designs a few times. Eventually though, I did end up getting to a stage where I can finally prototype. And just a few things to point out. The first thing is I have now divided this into six just because printing is a bit more consistent this way. And I had decided to add in a hex pattern for the majority of the empty space that's on the bottom just to save on material.